question. Keep your eye on the altitude in the bottom right-hand corner. We're at 54 kilometers right now. Wow, look at this. Re-entry is indeed not easy. Although Starship's return to Earth during its fourth launch resulted in damage with heat shields falling off and even being ground into small pieces, Elon Musk quickly revealed a new solution to fix the heat shield for Starship's next flight. So, what is Elon's big solution to address Starship's re-entry issues? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. One of the most challenging parts of a rocket or spacecraft is the heat shield. This is because engineers can't test full-size models under the same conditions they'll face during re-entry back to Earth. As a result, heat shield development often takes longer and continues late into the spacecraft's design process. For example, during SpaceX's first crewed Dragon launch in 2020, engineers were surprised to find unusual damage on the heat shield. Similarly, NASA's Orion spacecraft experiences issues with cavitation, which is the formation of small bubbles that can cause damage. Similarly, during SpaceX's third Starship test flight in March, the intense heat during re-entry destroyed the Starship as it descended through the upper atmosphere above the Indian Ocean. The design of the spacecraft's heat shield involves thousands of tiles covering the windward surface and fins, and any gaps in the tile application can lead to unforeseen consequences. In the latest launch on June 6th, SpaceX successfully managed the intense heating process, showcasing purple and orange plasma flowing over the vehicle as it moved through the atmosphere. During the descent, as seen from the camera's perspective, Ceramic heat tiles were seen flaking off into small pieces. It's believed that the hinge joint on one of the ship's flaps was exposed due to the loss of heat tiles, causing about a third of the flap to melt. Despite this, the damaged flap could still move and help control the spacecraft using aerodynamic forces as it plunged deeper into the Earth. Indeed, the footage of Starship's re-entry made us overjoyed, but it can't be denied that it also makes us worried about the problem with those broken heat shields. But I gotta tell you, don't worry too much about it. And why do I say that? Well, surprisingly, this incident seemed to be anticipated by Elon Musk, CEO of SpaceX. In a partially unreleased interview with Tim Dodd, a well-known space content creator on YouTube, Musk had previously expressed his concerns about the heat shield challenge. It appears that this event might have been an experiment by Musk and SpaceX engineers to adjust and test future designs. In his interview with Everyday Astronaut, Musk shared that the hinge between the flap and Starship is one of the most vulnerable areas during re-entry. This is due to hot gas that can flow in this gap, destroying not only the stainless steel body, but also the ceramic heat shield tiles. Sealing that hinge gap and not having hot gas just go flowing super fast through the interface of the flap hinge is crucial to ensuring that the gas does not cook anything, including the tiles, according to Musk. Throughout the test flight, SpaceX had shared multiple camera views from the second stage Starship. These cameras showed the forward and aft flaps, and after the forward flap caught fire, SpaceX stuck with his camera view for the remainder of Starship's flight. According to Musk, SpaceX placed a hot gas seal at the forward and rear flap hinge, and the test checked whether these seals worked. Surprisingly for Starship, even though its flap caught fire, Starship completed its atmospheric re-entry thanks in no small part to SpaceX's decision to use steel as the rocket's build material. The engineers chose stainless steel alloy for the main structure of Starship. This material is heavier than aluminum or carbon fiber, but durable at cryogenic temperatures, an important characteristic since Starship consumes methane and liquid oxygen cooled to several hundred degrees below zero. Stainless steel also has a higher melting point than other materials commonly used on rockets. For a reusable ship, you're coming in like a meteor, Musk said in 2019. You want something that does not melt at a low temperature. You want something that melts at a high temperature, and this is where steel is extremely good as well. While initially, SpaceX had chosen stainless steel grade 301 to build Starship, Musk shared in another post that the firm has since moved to an internally developed alloy called SX300. This is because 301 steel could not withstand the extremely cold temps that Starship has to endure because of its cryogenic propellants. The propellants, methane, and liquid oxygen are super cooled before launch to improve fuel capacity and rocket performance. On the flaps, Musk added that future Starships will feature upgraded flaps. According to him, an upgraded Starship will have a newer version of Starship has the forward flap shifted leeward to improve reliability, ease of manufacturing, and payload to orbit. Starship's leeward side is the region that points to the sky and away from the atmosphere during re-entry. Honestly, even though Starship's back on Earth, the issues with the heat shield have never been easy, and here's why. 
Objects approaching and entering Earth's atmosphere are accelerated by Earth's gravity while at the same time experiencing atmospheric drag or friction, which puts extreme mechanical stress on the object and intense aerodynamic heating caused primarily by the shock compression of the air in front of the fast-moving object, but also by the drag as well. These forces can combine to cause a loss of mass, technically called an ablation, or even complete disintegration of smaller, tougher objects, the result of which you can observe whether you see a falling star and objects with lower compressive strength can simply explode from the forces involved. Projectiles like intercontinental ballistic missile warheads don't have to be slowed for re-entry, and are in fact designed in a streamlined way to maintain their hypervelocity, which is one of the reasons they're so hard to shoot down. However, reusable space vehicles and of course any spacecraft with human passengers inside must be slowed to below supersonic velocities before any parachutes or air brakes can get deployed or the vehicle can fire retro rockets for landing or recapture. So how fast does the spacecraft travel during re-entry? In a word, fast. To date, successful re-entry has been achieved with speeds ranging from 7.8 kilometers a second from low Earth orbit to around 12.5 kilometers a second in the case of the Stardust probe. Since these vehicles have high kinetic energies and are greatly accelerated by Earth's gravity, the only practical way of expending this energy is gradual slowing via atmospheric dissipation, which in effect converts velocity and kinetic energy into heat, necessitating the use of robust heat shielding. You might ask why retro rockets couldn't be used to slow the vehicle for a more gentle trip down through the atmosphere, but the forces involved are so great it would be effectively impossible for a space vehicle to carry enough fuel to sufficiently slow it for re-entry. Until nuclear space propulsion or anti-gravity engines start becoming possible, heat shielding and gradually slow pacing vehicles via friction with the atmosphere is the only practical way to complete the re-entry procedure. For decades of space launches and the development of re-entry vehicles, many types of heat shields for re-entry have been tested, but two main methods have emerged as the most prominent and are still used today, ablative heat shields and refractory insulation tiles. Starship is a spacecraft that uses refractory insulation tiles to shield the vehicle. Therefore, it requires a type of heat shield that can ensure multiple factors. A refractory insulation type heat shield uses an extremely low conducting outer material, commonly fabricated into smallish, replaceable tiles due to material strength constraints, combined with a heat resistant base material to keep the intense heat in the outermost layer of the spacecraft's surface, where it's then conducted away by the air. Since the surface temperature rises to incandescent levels, the refractory insulation material must necessarily have a very high melting point, while at the same time exhibiting very low thermal conductivity. Materials with these properties tend to be brittle, delicate, and difficult to fabricate in large sizes. So it's for this reason that the refractory insulation layer is typically constructed from relatively small tiles that are attached to the structural skin of the spacecraft using high temperature adhesives or mechanical attachment points. Besides these durability factors, modern rapidly reusable spacecraft also use uniform heat shield shapes and common placements, such as the hexagonal tiles covering the re-entry side of SpaceX's Starship. Although many obstacles still lie ahead for Starship, I firmly believe that with SpaceX's ability to learn from each test, they'll gradually overcome the limits of space that once seemed impossible. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.